Hey, what is going on everybody? My name is Nuzzle, and today I'll be bringing you guys some post-game commentary over a match me and my good friend uh, Ruben played a couple of weeks ago. It is a Zor I am uh, on your right playing Zoroark Lycanroc, and my good friend Ruben is on the left playing Zoroark Lissapod, which was good a couple of weeks ago, because this match was recorded before Forbidden Light came out. So, yeah, there was no Buzzwell to worry about, and Zoroark was still good. Feels bad. Um, as you guys can see, I am going first, starting with a uh, Bridget on my first turn, giving me all the Zeruas and Rock Ruffs I need for a reminder of the match, which is awesome. And if we look over to Ruben's side, he doesn't have much. He has a Cynthia, which he can use, but that's looking like a horrible hand. Double puzzle in hand, nothing much. So, I myself am holding a double colorless energy and a choice band as well. So even if some stuff comes down, um, I pretty much have an answer. And I was debating attaching a strong energy to my bench, but I decided not to because I know he plays an Enst Hammer. And look at that top deck. He top decks another Zoroark GX, which is horrible. Um, so yeah, he's shuffling in right now and hoping to hit some better stuff. Yeah, look at my hand. Cynthia, Choice Band, Double Colorless Energy, and that's looking awesome. Uh, my prizes are a bit off the screen, uh, I am, you know, um, I do have 6 prizes left, but I lay them down in stacks of 3, instead of um, 3 stacks of 2, so some of my prizes are off the screen, but I guess that's okay. And look what he draws, he draws absolutely nothing, he has a grass energy, 2 Zoroarks, a double colorless, he can do nothing man, he has to pass. And myself top deck a field blower, which I can't really use, so side to attention double colorless energy. There's the choice band and a Cynthia to hopefully hit myself a Zoroark GX and win the first game. I mean in these like matches that I record it never is really fun to see your opponent draw horrible, but I mean it happens and we are playing best of three, so it should be fine. There's one, that's that's game immediately. The Ultra Ball, such a nice card to get. My phone is sound so yeah he showed me his hand he's like I have absolutely nothing man he didn't even check my prizes this game because he didn't do anything or yeah there's really no excuse to me not prize checking it's you know it, it, it is a friendly match on tournaments I do prize check and I do look you know what's missing here but during matches like this just want to hurry up you know I don't want to make these matches extra long so yeah we are currently shuffling up for game two, which I am not going to skip because lazy editing. That's pretty much it, guys. So, let's hopefully see Ruben do a bit better game two. And yeah, we're shuffling up. We're both using Dragon Shoot sleeves, if any of you are wondering and cannot see. Uh, we both love these sleeves, man. They're really thick. They're really, really good to riffle because they're sturdy. They don't break easily. So. Um, yeah, game two, here we go. And uh, Ruben is of course going first, uh, and he's playing all four golden ultra balls. He has four of them, it looks awesome. So the prize again, place them on screen again this time. Yeah, I did, awesome. There we go, game two. I start Rock Ruff, he starts Sarua. I have a Bridget in hand. There's the ultra ball, slapping down the Mewtwo, and the Max Potion. So, Ruben's list is really like heavy on healing. He plays. I'm pretty sure he played he play three Ace Roll and this Animax Potion as well. So, yeah, there's the Lele coming down. Of course, gonna grab himself a Bridget to get down some basics and hopefully have a better start than the previous game. But Lycanroc is, of course, a huge um, threat for him in this matchup um, because it can one shot everything he lays down in one hit including one Galist spot if he benches enough but that's usually not really a problem like most people never play around dangerous rogue which is fun because you can blow up anything you want to uh, I'm pretty sure Ruben was price checking lol I wasn't I was wh wh when I'm playing that guy I'm usually like okay come on let's let, let let's make this quick let's make this a quick one even in tournaments, if I fight Ruben in tournaments, we, like, six times out of ten, we, we decide to just draw, because we really don't want to knock each other out. 
and if a draw doesn't knock us out either we usually just draw but if we do have to play you know we're actually playing for points um <laughs> if we're like playing for points um yeah even then i'm still like come on let's hurry up man i, I want some lunch i want to get some lunch come on <laughs> so yeah playing against the guy's fun He's one of my, you know, main testing partners. I do pretty much all my testing together with him. So we usually are running pretty, um, pretty much the same lists at tournaments. And like, this is even how competitive we are. We were playing at my house uh, for fun, like no points, no tournaments, whatever. And we're still cutting each other's deck. <laughs> That's horse. I'm pretty sure this is still my turn too. I'm price checking a little bit now. Not price check checking the rest. Man, I wanna hit myself. Come on, dude, price check. As you guys can see here, I am discarding the multi switch, uh, which may seem weird to some of you, but I am, of course, playing puzzles of time to get them back. And the discard pal is actually pretty much the only way I can easily access the multi switch. So that's. Oh my god, am I playing two right now? Oh no, that's the Leyland. Um. I'm pretty sure I played this Lele because I was afraid of a parallel city. And I also think I didn't have Food Blower in hand. Otherwise, that Lele is horrible. No, I didn't have Food Blower in hand. So I was afraid of a parallel city because I had absolutely nothing. And I'm pretty sure Ruben just. Yeah, he, he pops off here. Two Evo Soda, one turn. That's always nice. I was saying, you can only play one, you can only play one. <laughs> he was like, oh, fuck off. So, yeah. He's going back in, and he shows me the end. I was like, oh, man. I got that, Cyn that Cynthia for nothing, man. Now that Lele is just sitting there, being useless. Oh, my God, that Lele is out of focus. Yeah, it's a Lele, guys. And I did get my turn one attachment on the Rock Rock, which is huge as well. It's actually huge. Having that attachment there pretty much like makes it ready for whenever I want to, because I just attach a DC and evolve, and I pretty much take four prizes. That's usually what happens. So Ruben's side, he has two double colorless in hand. Coco comes down. Like, and he has the E-Hammer. Getting the basic fighting on the Rock Ruff is so important. I'm pretty sure I was still playing Strong Energies at this point. Actually, don't even play them anymore as a Rock Like a Rock. It's like, you blowing me up yet? Am I dead yet? But he's still at his trade, so that's one. Probably gonna trade the Enhanced Hammer or the Guzma. You always trade a second time here, that hand is horrible. Yeah, like I said, probably the Gizma, because he is playing multiple. Yeah, trade number two. Getting a Cynthia and another Zoroark, so the trades keep going. He's keeping it up. And my Rockruff is going to die. So, let's see. E-Hammer gone. Two. Getting himself a second Grass Energy is pretty bad, actually. And he just rides his beating. Uses rides his beating. So, I'm uh, promote Azurua. I'm actually not even sure why I didn't promote Rockruff. Hmm, that's a good question. Dude, fix that Lele, man. It's almost sideways. I just decided to end. I'm pretty sure that end was horrible. And he took a prize card, so. Like, you know, let me just end. Get your hand size, like, lowered. And now that I'm watching this post game, I actually know I'm shuffling back in two Grass Energies, which is pretty good because it would have probably traded one or maybe even two of them away. Um, but yeah, it's just having a Wimp up there as a like threat for my Rock Ruff or Lycan Rock, soon to become a Lycan Rock. So, yeah. And in my list, I'm actually playing Mew EX as. Oh my god, I just pass. I didn't have anything. Jesus. You can see Mew, Kukui, like Mallow. That hand is horrible, man. Trade number one. That's probably why I didn't promote Rock Ruff. Oh my 
god. This game is getting out of hand. Oh, jeez. Who's bad? There's a Galissa pod, and there's the Gizmo. <laughs> no, we're not doing that. Okay, it's over. <laughs> jeez. And again, as you can see, I didn't price check at all. What's, what are you doing, man? Oh. He has the Guzma as well as the Galissapod and Grezzer. I'm like, Scoo I'm gonna scoop it up. I'm gone. <laughs> I'm out of here. We're not doing this. This is hopeless. Because that's pretty much our win condition gone. Because he is playing a lot more healing than I am. So, this is fine. So, we're tied right now. 1-1. One, one. Mm, two wonky games. First game was a donk. And the second game was me dead drawing mid game. So, that's awesome. Let's see how the third game goes. Okay, so cutting each other's decks. Remember, it was hot as hell that day. And we're sitting inside playing a game of Pokemon. That's a mulligan, dude. That hand would have been amazing, though. Like, exchange the puzzle for pretty much any basic. I'm okay with that. Room is starting Mewtwo. Ugh. Uh, I actually didn't even see if Ruin had a... No, he didn't have a Bridget. No Ultra Ball, nothing. And there's the die. Oh, that hand is pretty good, actually. So Ruben can take one extra card. And yes, again, there are six prizes there. It's just hard to see. There's a Rock Ruff and a Mewtwo. And look what he took of the Mulligan. Ah, uh, that's horrible. And of course, I am going first. And there's your turn one, Bridget. Grabbing a fighting energy. Awesome. I'm actually price checking now because I... Uh, it just pisses me off, man. Why didn't you price check? That's horrible. Even though this, these are friendlies... Uh, look back on that now and I'm like, you know... You should price check. Because at this point, because I didn't price check, because, you know, we're playing a friendly match, I have absolutely no idea what's in my price cards. Strong energy. I'm pretty sure Ruben doesn't have an end stammer. Yeah, he just has a straight up end. Showed me his hand. Showed him mine. Now, that's what I mean. It's a friendly game. We're not, like, playing serious. Or at least I'm not. I'm not here. I'm just having fun, you know, the camera was on. I'm just like, you know, let's chill out, let's not make any dumbass mistakes. Don't do anything stupid, just, just play the game. And as you can obviously tell by my side of the field, my start was amazing. Drew six cards there, and hands them on hand. I'm like, that attachment, it's unsafe, but, you know, I need something. Pretty sure he has the Ultra Ball here. Ultra Ball, Bridget, Guzma. And again, Ruin has absolutely nothing in hand. Or he's going Lele right now. No, he's actually going Zorua. That's a bit greedy, my dude. And that is a bit greedy. Actually, don't even know... I'm. No, I actually don't know how this match ends. Can't remember. <laughs> that Sarua is pretty greedy if you have only a double colorless energy and a Ultra Ball in hand. I don't really agree with that. And he has to pass. There's an Ace Rattler for me. From the top. Let's see. I'm pretty sure I'm looking right now. Like, do I have any way that I can knock out that Sarua right now? Because if, if I can kill that in this turn, that's honestly, like, huge. That's game-changing. And I'm actually pretty sure that that even wraps up the game. If I can kill that Tarua right now, I pretty much win. I'm pretty sure... Or... I don't know, am I playing it safe? And grabbing... Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm grabbing a Zorak because I'm leaving it in the middle. Nope. Yeah, there, there we go. Zorak GX, of course, giving me the ability trade there's another ultra ball 
Lele. And I am playing one Sycamore, and I did see it in my deck. I remember that. I remember that specifically. I checked with the first Ultra Ball. I checked if it was prized, and it wasn't. So I did a little price checking, I guess. I, or at least I knew that thing wasn't priced. And there we go. Fresh end of seven. We have trade uh, available. So there's a fighting energy. Trade number one. DC fighting. Do I have any way to get a Lycan Rock? I don't. That hand is pretty bad, man. Corner. Corner. All I do is corner. There's a Zoro. Oh my god, that guy just top decked a Zoro. He had nothing in hand. Wait, what? That's so dumb, dude. Oh yeah, he's... He's a... Why does my phone make so much noise, man? That's hilarious. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Let's get the damage ready. Wow. He just topped like that. I actually didn't even know that, man. That's pretty nice. And he is, of course, going for the bridge at grabbing two Wimpods. I'm like, okay. So... Probably has to Saru a price or something. Because in my opinion, you always go for Wimpop there. And then he just psychics. Uh, I draw my card, which is an Ultra Ball. And I decide to Mallow to guarantee. Yeah, it's a guaranteed Lycan Rock. I actually agree on that. I love Mallow. Mallow is really good in Sorok decks. Actually, didn't even like it that much first because it is a bit slow, but or it's slower than just like drawing random cards. But it's a bit more safe. So I started playing and I actually really did like the card. Mewi X, go away. So rock number two. Who do I evolve? I'm pretty sure I just evolve active. The thirsty eyes, Wimpod. Just to make sure the thing dies. Uh, trade one? No, trade number two. And that's a knockout. So, promoting Coco. Does he have anything in hand now? There's a Zoroark. Another one. Oh, he had one Zoro in hand. There's an N. So, he's out. He didn't attach. I'm pretty sure he got a double color this there. I'm not sure why he didn't attach that. Oh, my sleeve is slightly damaged. Huh. <laughs> Lol. Already threw these sleeves away, by the way. So it doesn't really matter that much. Okay, there's a glissopod. Grass energy. That means a dead like rock, dude. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure this is where the game, like, turns around. He has to bench a lot of stuff. Or, he, he benched his last Sarua, which leaves him with a bench of uh, five. So, I can, de like, double colorless and like rock to just kill the Galispot immediately. He also decides to hold the double puzzle, which is smart in my opinion. And yeah, it's just first impressions. So that's fine. I guess that's why he didn't attach the double colorless. He wanted to, you know, hit kill his spot and actually go for a knockout. So if choice band, I'm pretty sure that's a double puzzle in my hand. Trade number one. Oh yeah, I was trading just to see what I wanna I wanted to get from the double puzzle. There's Rua. Awesome, dude. This board is looking really strong. And there's two puzzle. The bottom card is hard to see, but you guys can trust me. It's a double. Or it's another puzzle of time. One of them is reverse, and the other isn't, because I only have one reverse. Which sucks. Okay, let's see. Oh, 
Wow, I'm actually taking a long time there. Just got double colored us and Biker Rock, dude. Yeah, that really wasn't that hard. So, Lycan Rock, no ability. Uh, double colorless, and flip that marker, Jex, for 250. And three prizes left. I'm pretty sure this is just where I win the game. He comes in with a Zoroark, I one shot it, then. Yeah, this, this is, of course, a huge turning point in a game. But just immediately killing that Galistapod just gives me so much advantage. Okay, let's see, what do you have, man? Okay. So, trade number one. One, two. Three puzzles in hand, oh my goodness. Trade number two, I'm pretty sure. Ooh. And trait number. We're just going to double puzzle. What would you even get with this? In my opinion, you have to end. You have to play an end. Because I'm sitting on a huge hand. Oh yeah, I was going for this. He played Pseudo Wudo. Which is like a fun inclusion in the deck, but I don't think it's that good. Because you're playing one Pseudo Wudo and one counter energy. I mean, it's like decent to counter all the other Zoroark decks, but... Nah, no, two one-offs is way too clunky in my opinion, even with puzzles. So he benches it, that's what he's of course going for. Once the GX me back, deal exactly 200 and knock it out. So I was like, why didn't you just get counter energy? I didn't have it, oh, okay. I thought you did. Actually, I actually do think it's funny because this was meta, like two or three weeks ago. and. Forbidden Light came out, it, it was legal to play, and I haven't seen any Zoroark, like, since Forbidden Light came out. Here in the Netherlands, everyone is playing Buzzwool or Malamar. Yeah, or, I shouldn't be lying, I did see some Zoroark, like, on the bottom tables of a tournament, so. Just, it's just not good anymore, man, there's too much Buzzwool, and even a Crossma can beat this. So, yeah, it's weird. And as you can see, um, he did whiff on the, what's it called, counter energy. So, he's dealing damage right now. And I'm just like, if I, you know, if I can get a Guzma here, I win. Period. In my opinion, I should, oh no, I can't because Paralocity is in play. Um, so I actually trade away the Rock Ruff. I don't agree with that at all. Or, well, I'm pretty sure it's fine. I've got my in hand. What the fuck am I doing? Oh yeah, that was his discard. <laughs> um. So yeah, I'm just sitting on a really like good hand right now. Kill that thing. Get it over here. I just show him the double colorless and um, put it in my discard, just to like, tell him I'm retreating this Zoroark, don't want to do all the moving around, and I blow it up, and because he benched Sudo Wudo and his uh, Coco as well, I can actually like just win um, next turn if I have a Guzma, because he has the one prizer on board, Mewtwo would have been a problem, but um, yeah, it's a weak 7 prize game that he's playing right now, because he has absolutely Jeez. He has absolutely nothing. And he actually does have a counter energy in hand right now, so. Uh, I'm actually hoping he doesn't go for that. 
Oh, Mewtwo isn't enough, man. That's 10 short. He needed that. So, even if he attacks with Sudowoodo, I can just attach energy, add a basic Pokemon to my bench, and win the game. So... Yeah, game 3 was pretty good. That was a pretty good game. The first two games were a bit one-sided. So... Cutting the decks now. Let's see. And enter one. I'm pretty sure that gave me Cynthia. Yeah, I did. That's hilarious. So, draw is of course live. Um, there's trade one. And, yep, there it is. Sudowoodo comes up. Watch and learn. Takes a knockout. And he's hoping that I will miss energy as well as a basic. So, here I was debating trading first or playing Cynthia first. And I was like, no, you always Cynthia there. You know, you want to draw as much cards as possible, not shuffle half of them back in after trading three times. So, you always Cynthia first. And now's the question, like, uh, I need two cards, I need double colorless energy, as well as a basic Pokemon. And I get neither. Oh my god. Trade number one. Uh, there's a double colorless. Trade number two. Come on man, I just need a basic. And trade number three. Oh wait, I'm actually lying, I need two basic Pokemon. 20, 40, 60, yeah. Oh, there we go. So, there's Rockruff and a Zorua. And Ruben immediately sees it. He's like, okay, good game, dude. So, it's over. So, yeah, dude, I did take uh, the series 2 to 1. Um, and in my opinion, Lycanroc, back when this was actually like played a lot. Um, in my opinion, just because you are playing Lycanroc, you are heavily favored. It's just so much better. Um, so yeah, awesome match. And with that, I'm actually going to wrap up the video already. So I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.